probably heard that drinking caffeine before you exercise is a good idea, particularly from people trying to sell you pre-workout supplements. But does the science actually support that? Today I am going over scientific studies on how having caffeine before you work out affects how much fat you burn, and also how a specific type of caffeinated drink might have different effects. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And I want to start by saying thank you to all of our patrons over on Patreon, as well as our supporters on GoFundMe for helping make these weekly videos possible, and for helping me to fend off the burnout that comes from having a very intense full-time job along with intense hobbies like making these videos for you all. So if you are interested in supporting the channel and getting exclusive content, as well as being able to make research requests on questions of your own, as well as being able to weigh in on videos before they come out, then head on over to the Patreon, which is linked in the description below and also up here. And today I will be focusing on fat oxidation during exercise, which is just the scientific term for fat burning. And I want to note that this is different from how many calories you burn, because as you may know, when we exercise, we draw both from carbs and fat. So when we burn calories from exercise, that comes from some kind of combination of carbs and fat. And the percentage of carbs versus fat that we burn is affected by all sorts of factors. For example, the intensity of your exercise, which I go over in detail in this other video that you may want to check out after this one if you are interested. Now, importantly, based on the studies, it does seem like it matters for our body composition, whether we're burning more carbs or fat from exercise, even for the same number of calories because when you get around maintenance weight or you are trying to do body recomposition or if you're eating a higher carb diet, then things are no longer as simple as calories in versus calories out for determining how much fat you're gonna burn. It's pretty clear, for example, from the studies I go over in this video on walking for weight loss, that burning more fat relative to carbs, even for the same number of calories, does have beneficial effects on body composition. So for example, you could burn 500 calories running slow or running fast, but because we know you burn more fat from running slow, the studies suggest that you would have better body composition from burning 500 calories via slow running compared to burning 500 calories via fast running. So all that to say, that is why I'm focusing on fat oxidation today because it does really seem to matter for body composition. So now let's get into how caffeine affects our fat oxidation rates during exercise. I'll be talking about caffeine in general as well as a specific type of caffeinated drink. And then at the end, I will talk about what time of day is best to get the biggest effects of caffeine on fat oxidation. And these studies cover both walking and biking and find the same effects. So this suggests that the effects I'm about to tell you about generalize across a lot of different types of cardio. The first one I'm gonna talk about is a green powder that you've probably had in lattes or maybe in baked goods. And that is matcha, which is green tea powder. And one study, for example, found that having people take three grams of matcha as a supplement every day for three weeks, as well as having one gram two hours before exercising, increased fat oxidation rates by 35% when they were walking for 30 minutes. And to put that in perspective using data from another study, a study found that having participants walk for 30 minutes a day, three times a week for 20 weeks, made them lose 3% in terms of body fat percentage points, as well as three pounds. And what the matcha study suggests is if that these participants had added matcha before their walks and been drinking matcha generally, they would have lost an extra body fat percentage point as well as an extra pound just from doing that walking. So 35% is a pretty big number if you ask me. And another study found the same thing except with matcha as a drink and having it only once the day before as well as once a couple hours before exercise instead of having to have it for three weeks. And I wanna note this effect was not caused by people walking more intensely or burning more calories overall or anything like that. Their energy expenditures were the same. The thing that changed was specifically how much they were burning fat versus carbs during that walk. One question I had after finding these studies was, well, how much of these effects are specific to green tea or are just driven by caffeine in general? So I went and found studies on caffeine specifically, and lo and behold, similar things have been found with caffeine itself. So for example, one study of biking found that giving people caffeine pills an hour before exercising, equivalent to three milligrams per kilogram of caffeine per body weight, found that people did indeed burn more fat an hour after having caffeine. And caffeine increased fat burning across a range of intensities, so from low intensity biking to high intensity biking. And unsurprisingly, having caffeine also helped people feel less fatigued when they were doing high intensity biking. So caffeine, 
also helps in terms of you actually being able to exercise longer, which would probably burn additional fat from burning more calories. This effect has also been confirmed in a meta-analysis, although note this meta-analysis is in an MDPI journal, which I generally try to avoid citing, so we should take it with a grain of salt. But the underlying studies across them does suggest that having caffeine before exercise really does increase fat oxidation. And specifically, the meta-analysis found that three milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight really does seem to be the sweet spot for how much caffeine to have an hour before exercising in order to burn the most fat. And it doesn't really seem like having more caffeine than that confers any extra benefits. And to give you a concrete number for how much caffeine this looks like, for a 130 pound woman, this would be 177 milligrams of caffeine, which corresponds to about 1.5 to two cups of standard coffee or 2.5 to three shots of espresso. One implication of this dosing for caffeine versus the dosing that was found to work with matcha suggests that matcha might be doing something above and beyond caffeine for fat burning during exercise, which is not surprising given all the benefits of the constituents of matcha for all sorts of things. And specifically, one gram of matcha is about 20 to 44 milligrams of caffeine, and that was enough to get huge benefits on fat oxidation. So if you do not want to have a ton of caffeine before exercising, but still want to get this boost in fat oxidation, then what these studies indicate is that you can just have a moderate amount of caffeine, small to moderate, via matcha, instead of having to have a ton of caffeine in the form of coffee or energy drinks or anything like that. And there's really no downside to incorporating more matcha into your routine because it's been found to reduce anxiety, reduce fasting blood glucose, and in in vitro studies, it's been found to reduce inflammation and potentially be cancer fighting, among a ton of other findings. And for our last nugget of wisdom from these studies, a study found that there are differences in how much caffeine can influence your fat burning in the morning versus the afternoon. So they found that caffeine given in the morning before exercise increased maximal fat oxidation rates by 10%, whereas caffeine given before afternoon workouts increased fat oxidation by 30%. So it seems like if you like to have afternoon caffeine already, then it might be a good idea to schedule your workouts for an hour after that afternoon caffeine if you want maximum fat burning from your workouts. And I'll also get into what time of day is best to have your workouts in order to burn the most fat in general, irrespective of caffeine. So if you're interested in that, be sure to hit the notification bell and subscribe button below if you haven't already, because that video will be coming out soon. So overall, in this case, it seems like the bro science is in line with the real science in that having caffeine before your workout is probably gonna help you burn fat. And as a note, I wanna say, please, please don't go overdose on caffeine because of this. It can cause heart problems if you take too much. And if you already have a pre-existing heart condition, it can be very dangerous. So don't go crazy on the caffeine. I do recommend sticking with matcha because it seems to have the biggest effects and that way you don't have to risk going overboard on caffeine in order to get your maximal fat burning. So one, Normal matcha latte should be plenty to give you a big fat oxidation boost. And again, if you wanna help support me in making these videos and wanna get access to exclusive content and all that, please head on over to the Patreon, which is in the description below as well as up here. And for one-time support, head on over to the GoFundMe, which is also linked below. I hope you found these results as cool as I did. And if you like this video, please hit the like button below and share it so that other people can learn about this cool finding. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.